It's time to get your checking account to zero with free checking from PenFed. That's zero ATM fees, zero balance requirements, and zero time spent waiting for your paycheck to direct deposit because you can receive it up to two days early. Open your account with just $25 and see how big zero can be. Apply online today at PenFed.org slash free checking. Early direct deposit eligibility may vary between pay periods and timing of payers' funding. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. Let's face it, most people aren't making massive turkey feasts on the regular, and after 364 days of not thinking about it, it can be hard to get that bird just right. That's where Instacart, the holiday rescue app, comes in. From getting all the ingredients to prep a full seasonal spread to getting last-minute swamps in a turkey emergency, Instacart has everything a holiday host needs to save face and save dinner. And right now, if you download Instacart, you get free delivery on your first three orders and delivery in as fast as one hour. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply. Mr. Smith, you have helped us immeasurably. The city is extremely grateful. Uh, I was none, Your Honor. I just don't go for hoodlums, that's all. Nevertheless, without your testimony to help the district attorney, the kingpin of this gambling group would never be brought to trial. Anytime you need me, I'll be around. Uh, That brings up another matter, Smith. The district attorney and I feel that you should have a bodyguard. Listen, I've been driving a hack around this town for years. I can take care of myself, see? Uh, Very well, if you insist. But be careful. There are powerful figures in the underworld who will stop at nothing to discredit you. Yeah, discredit me, sissy old boy. Me, Frankie Smith, get him a hoodlum. (laughs) That's for laughs. Hey! In my hack, I left the park right here. Raggy? Yeah? But what do you want? We have to move your hack. It's around the corner. Hey, what gives here? A bullet, or you won't like it. Come on, move. Why, you... Move my hack! All right. Get in the back seat. You're not going to get away with this, you know. That's what you think. No! We got plans for you, little man. This is Steve Granger, private detective with a story that blends Christmas and a cunning frame-up and had me playing a kind of private eye Santa Claus for New York Hacky's kid. In just a moment, I'll take you back to one of my most interesting cases. This is Granger. It was pretty near Christmas, a time which... It's usually quiet for guys in my line of business. I was sitting in my office sending out a few belated cards when the door opened and the boy walked in. Are you Steve Granger? Yeah, what can I do for you, Sonny? Some big, important job, maybe? My name is Frankie Smith. Wow, the only Frankie Smith I know is a cab driver. Been a friend of mine for years. That's my pop. I was named after him. That's why I came to see you. He's in bad trouble. What? He's in jail. Frankie in jail? I can't believe that. What'd he do? He didn't do anything. But somebody said he did, and now he's in jail. It doesn't look like he can get out for Christmas. So I I thought maybe you could help. I'll do anything I can, Frankie, but but what's your dad accused of? Burglary in the first degree is what the cops say. But he didn't, I tell you. And and you've got to get him out for Christmas. Pop's the only one I got in the world. This was the first I ever knew of Frankie Smith having any sort of family, much less a son. The boy told me where the cab driver was being held. I went down, had a lot of trouble getting in to see him, but finally made the grade. Granger, are you a sight for sore eyes? And have I got sore eyes? How come you're in the Bastille, Frankie? How come you knew I was here? His son came down to see me. He wants you out for Christmas. Hey, I might have known it. Chip off the old block, that kid. Granger, I am the recipient of a frame. I've been carefully matted, framed in birch, and now I'm about to be hung on the wall. Those are a lot of words, but no sense, chum. Just say something. Yesterday, I walked out of City Hall right smack into a smack over the head. I go out cold. When I come to, I'm in some doll's apartment. She is yelling thief at me. The cop shows up, and I wind up here. Yeah, sounds like the old framer, all right. They play it even safer. On the floor is the dame's fur coat. In a paper sack is the doll's jewelry. 
Downstairs in my hack, the cop finds some stuff that's been stolen from other spots around town. I wonder why they didn't just knock you off. I wonder, too, uh, <laughs> in a sort of grateful way. Of course, this will completely discredit any testimony you gave against the gambling syndicate. And when it's over and they're free... I wind up on the East River wearing concrete overshoes. I know what you mean. In any city, there are bail bond brokers. In big cities like New York, there are hundreds. But always there is one main guy. This one was named Ralph Hendon. I went to see him. What's on your mind, Granger? One of your clients get in the clink because of a mistake? No, Ralph, nothing like that. There's a hacky locked up on a burglary rap. He's innocent. I'd like to spring him for Christmas. His kid wants him. If you're talking about Frankie Smith, his kid's been here already. What's that mean? No dice. Why not? Granger, I'm a bail bond broker. I take risks. There's some I don't take. Frankie Smith has won. Hmm. So, he's dead. Also, you're wrong about him. He's guilty. The big boys telephone you and hand you the word. Is that why you won't go bail for Frankie? I'm very busy, Granger. Right now, you're very busy being a rat. That isn't going to help you. Thanks. For nothing. Oh, one more thing, Granger. Yeah? None of the other boys will go bail either. I went from office to office and got the same answer. Sorry, no bail for Frankie Smith. I wanted the police version of Frankie's supposed robbery and managed to worm it out of an embarrassed robbery detail man. Then I headed for my pal, Cal Hendricks. Cal knew and liked Frankie Smith. Also, as a newspaper man, he had sources. I hoped he had one now. Hiya, Stevie. Why so nonplussed? Frankie Smith is in jail. On a framed burglary rap. Uh-uh. That doesn't make him worth much to that investigation group, does it? No. I think that's why the frame was made. Frankie didn't have an enemy in the world. I want him out for the kid's Christmas. What about bail? No soap, Cal. You see, the police have him dead to rights. This, this woman says she walked into her apartment. She saw Frankie rifling the joint. She went downstairs, got a cop who made the pinch. Who is the woman? I got the name here. It's... Uh, Leela Rand. Lives on 50th Street. Have you talked to her? No. Well, why don't you? And let me make a few calls to find out if there isn't some way we can spring Frankie for Christmas. I watched the holiday crowd, most of them loaded down with packages and smiles, and thought of two people who might not smile the 25th. A small boy in a lonesome apartment, a cab driver prisoner in a solitary cell downtown. This was the address on 50th Street where Leela Rand lived. The apartment was on the third floor. I walked up. I reached the third floor and moved towards the Rand, a woman's apartment. I saw a slight figure at the door and moved a little faster. What? Frankie, what are you trying to do to that lock? Gee, Mr. Granger, I-, I was trying to get in. Don't you know that's against the law? You want to join your father in jail? Oh, gosh, I just wanted to get in and look around. Okay, okay, now beat it. Don't get any more ideas like that. Suppose Lee Loran caught you. I wouldn't care. Your father would. Y- yeah. Yeah, you're right, Mr. Granger. Hey, somebody's coming. Come on. Now stay out of sight. And don't say anything. Okay. Is that the woman? Quiet. She's stopping at the apartment. She must be Leela Rand. Are you going to talk to her? In a few minutes. Now you walk downstairs and go home and stay there. I waited a few minutes, then moved to the door of Leela Rand's apartment. Yes, what is it? I'm Steve Granger. Are you Leela Rand? I am. I'd like to talk to you about that robbery that took place up here, Miss Rand. The arrested man is an old friend of mine. Oh, come in. I thank you. I wonder if you'd mind telling me what happened up here. Oh, not at all. It was yesterday. I'd been shopping. The Christmas thing. Let me see. I came home. I unlocked the door and felt a presence. You know how women are. You saw him? Distinctly. He was going through that desk there. In the middle of this room, he'd piled my mink coat and a paper sack containing some jewelry. Mm-hmm. I closed the door very softly, went down the hall, and rang for the elevator. I rode downstairs and had the doorman get a police officer. Uh, tell me one thing. Did Smith seem to be dazed? You know, sort of not quite himself. I know. I don't think so. I see. Well, sorry I bothered you, Miss Rand. Oh, not at all. Oh, and I've not been a very good hostess. Uh, would you like a drink before you go? 
I have some excellent scotch. Oh, well, thanks. Holiday spirit, you know. Won't take a minute. I watched Lilo Rand move towards a typical apartment bar stuck in one corner. She stood with her back to me. She got out the ingredients plus some ice, mixed the highball, and came back. Here you are, Mr. Granger. I hope you like soda. I do, yes, thanks. A toast to your success. I'll drink to it, but I'm afraid I'm at a dead end. Cheers, just to say. Cheers. Well, how was it, Mr. Granger? <sighs> Delicious. Kind of strong, but... Mr. Granger, what's wrong? You look like you, you don't feel so good. No, I'm all right. I'm just going to get some air. Mr. Granger, oh, why don't you lie down for me? I got to I gotta go. I got to gotta get out of here. Oh, no, Mr. Granger, you, you can't go now. You're too tired. I... You're sleepy. Oh, why don't you let me get a pillow for you and rest your head? Let go. I got to get out of here. Oh, lie down, Mr. Granger. What? Lie down like a good little boy. I... Sleep, Mr. Granger. <laughs> Sleep. I'll continue with this interesting story in a minute. I don't remember anything after Leela Rand telling me to sleep. When I came back alive, there was a taste like bear fur in my mouth, and my head was aching from every angle. I tried to sit up and found I couldn't move my hands. They'd been tied firmly behind my back, and my feet were laced together, too. Then I heard the noise at the door, scratching, as though someone was trying to break in. I hopped towards it. <coughs> Who's there? Is that you, Mr. Granger? Frankie! Open the door, Mr. Granger! Just a minute. Let me see if I can do it. I'll just turn my back and see if I can reach the knob with my fingers. I nearly got it. Try harder, Mr. Granger. I, I, I got it. Now, if only I can... I, my luck's in, kid. The door wasn't locked. Oh, gee, Mr. Granger, did you let a, a woman tie you up? I certainly did. Undo me, will you, kid? There. Uh, Here, I got your hands free. Thanks, son. Well, this I owe you something. Well, you know, I didn't like that, Mrs. Randy. I'll go along with that, Frankie. There, I ain't got the feet free. Now, let's get out of here. Why don't you go and look around? Isn't that why you wanted to get in here, too? Frankie, we're up against a very smart bunch of crooks. They don't let things lay around for private eyes to find. I escorted Frankie's son to his apartment, told him to stay there for the second time, and called Cal Hendricks. I told him what had been happening to me, and asked if he'd got anywhere with his investigations. There's one person I help you, a former gambler. The syndicate broke him. Yeah, well, where do I find him? Oh, he's retired. He lives in New Rochelle. I'll give you his address. Thanks. And hey, be careful of him. He was double-crossed once. It almost cost him his life. So what? The double-cross was set up by a private detective. Cal gave me the character's name. Michael Fless. The address was an apartment house in New Rochelle. I grabbed a train and went there. It took under an hour to get to the suburban city. Michael Fless lived in a building as circumspect as a Bible class. Hello? Uh, you're Michael Fless. Uh, I'm Steve Granger. The private eye, huh? A uh, hack driver has been framed in New York. Is fixed without bail. Not interested, Granger. You will be when I tell you that the syndicate did the job. Pell straight? It could be. If he's the head like the law thinks. He is. There's a dame mixed up in it named... Leela Rand. She mickeyed me. She's a snake. She helped get me. I want that cab driver out for Christmas. Tomorrow's the last day. Can you help me? Yeah. There's a character hangs around a nice spot on 23rd Street. His name is Louis Brill. He's my eye. He's been getting things together. Maybe this might be a good a time to get even. It would. The law would be on your side. Granger. What? If I help... The law is out until it's over. Understand? Okay. And you? Play it straight or play it dead? Mr. Pless was not fooling. There was about as much Christmas spirit in his pale blue eyes as there is in an Eskimo who's been locked out of his igloo. I wasn't kidding myself that this was a friendly character, but at least he looked like providing me with a little ammunition, even if it might backfire on me. In just a moment, I'll bring you the climax of the case. I 
left Michael Fless and made my way back to Manhattan. With him helping me along, I felt a bit more hopeful in my fight for Frankie Smith. Even the trees placed in the windows along the Great White Way looked a little greener as I moved down towards the 23rd Street spot occupied by the mysterious Louis Brill. When I found him, Mr. Brill wasn't too pleasant. I don't know if Fliss is playing it right or not. I must have forgotten about that other private eye. What do you want? What have you got on Pell Strader and his crowd? I found out where the records of the syndicate are hidden. An old loft building downtown on Water Street. Half block from Pier 7. Any name on it? Far Eastern Warehouse Company. A dummy outfit set up by Strader. You know a dame named Leela Rand has an apartment on 50th Street? Sure, she's Strader's girl. She's been in on a million frames. Used that apartment for just that purpose. Where she really lived? At 3478 East 34th Street. Under her own name? Yeah. One more thing. A cabbie named Frankie Smith was framed for a burglary job at the Rand woman's 50th Street address. He described a mug that slugged him. Uh, who would some of Strader's men be? Look over there. Third table on the inside. Yeah? See that guy wearing a tan topcoat? He might be the guy. If he's not, he's the real slugger's boss. I started back uptown when I left the 23rd Street joint, but changed my mind and went down to police headquarters. In the identification bureau, I came across the picture of the man Brill had pointed out to me. He had a record longer than an ape's arm. Five minutes later, I was shown into Frankie Smith's cell. Well, well. Welcome to my humble abode, Granger. Frankie, I think we've come up with something, but I want you to look at this picture first. You recognize him? Yeah. He's the character who slugged me the other day. You're positive. Would you swear to that identification on a witness stand? With much emphasis and complete confidence. I took the picture back to the identification bureau, got a report on the hoodlum's present address, and with it received a shock. He lived in the same building on 50th Street as Leela Rand's hangout. I headed straight for Cal Hendricks' home base. And told him what I'd found out. Maybe we could get to that hoodlum and sweat him a little if he confessed Frankie Smith would go free. Then we could stick the DA's office into Pell Strader's syndicate records and make it up to Fless and New Rochelle. Good idea. But I think we ought to get to the records first. Would that be playing it square with Frankie? He still wouldn't get out of that burglary charge. Yeah, that's right. Let's uh, pay this hoodlum a visit first. His apartment is right next to the one Leela Rand uses. Smart setup for that gang any time they had a frame to pull. Yeah. Hey, the door's opening. Quick. Back around the corner. Okay, now we're leaving. But don't forget, Steve Brangie will get you if you don't get him. Don't worry. He'll be lost by morning. You have a planned future. Quiet. Call us when you finish with him. Right. Come on, Leela. Let's get going. Recognize the man with the Rand doll? Pell Strader. Yeah, I know. Listen, Cal, you follow them. Find out where they go. I'll handle this myself. Okay. Meet you at your place. Out in front. Right. I'll walk down. Who's there? Strader. I forgot something. Hey, you ain't... Oh! Get in there. Get up those hands and keep them up. What are you trying to pull? I'm Steve Granger. Does that mean anything to you? No. Then it doesn't mean anything that I heard Leela Rand tell you to get rid of me either. She was only fooling. Like you were fooling when you slugged Frankie Smith and then framed him for burglary. I don't know anything. Frankie can identify you, Buster. I'm going to take you downtown. And you can tell the cops your story, if they believe it. Now, wait a minute. Get your hat. We're paying a call on police headquarters. As I spoke, the door behind me was pushed open. And two shots sang in the room. The hoodlum fell to the floor, mortally wounded, and pulling me with him. When I got back to my feet, enough time had passed for the assailant to get to the Bronx. I found one thing, a key in the door. I wrapped it in my handkerchief, hoping for fingerprints. Just to check, I went down into the main hallway of the building and found Cal Hendricks just sitting up on the floor. Oh, my head. What happened to you, Cal? Oh, they must have got wise to me. I came down the steps, rounded the corner, and blam, I caught it. They must have smelled something. When they saw you, they got you out of the way. And they went back upstairs, unlocked the door, and shot the handyman. Oh, it's great. Did you get anything out of it? Yeah. It won't do any good now. He's dead. I don't think any statement I'd make would stand up. Why, it's that. Yeah. Here comes a homicide crew. With a hat full of questions. After that? I want to go down to the police lab. I got a key. With fingerprints, I hope. We told the homicide men our story. They promised to get out a pickup on Pell Strader and Lilo Ren. A pickup that wouldn't do much good because they'd obviously alibi themselves. Then we went to the police lab. We got an interesting report. 
Well, Steve, what'd the lab boys tell you? The key had the print of a thumb and forefinger, Cal. Good, good. Better than you think. The prints are those of a woman's. Leela Lorraine? Who else's? Now, what we need is a paraffin test done on Strader and Leela Lorraine. Then we'll know which one shot their mug pal. And maybe Frankie Smith will be out for Christmas if the police pick up that pair. You and I won't wait for that, old boy. No? We're going down to that warehouse and get the syndicate records. That way we can force their hand. Dark down, Keith. Nice night for a murder. He cut that out. Place is right ahead. See the sign? Far Easton? Yep. How are you going to get in? Here's the door. Well, can't wait for somebody to unlock it for us. Grab one of the knob. There you are, Mr. Hendricks. Let's close it. Why do we start? I can make out what looks like an office over there. Here we are. Now there's a light cord. Want me to pull it? What do we got to lose? Two filing cases. Yeah. Find anything? Take a look. Records of gambling takes, operations of different places. Straight a signature all over everything. Yeah, and look at this. Leela Rand's signature. We've got her, too. Now, if you can only get Frankie Smith out of the clink. <laughs> what about that? I don't know. Will answer? Went up. Yep. Don't bother to disguise your voice, Granger. This is Leela Rand. What do you want? I want you to leave those records alone. If you do, Frankie Smith's son will be free in an hour. You've got him? Just a minute. Gee, Mr. Granger, I unlocked the door and he grabbed me. Heard enough, Granger. Yeah, I'll do as you ask. I told Cal what had happened, and we agreed that I would be in my office in an hour. But first, he and I went uptown to the 34th Street building where Leela Rand really lived. I left Cal behind with instructions to wait five minutes and then come up. Come in, Granger. With your hands in sight. You were waiting for me, huh? Certainly. I've had a man on you ever since you got away from my little plan. I know every move you've made. Now what? You've got to go. Just like you shot your mug helper. Why not? Where's Trader? In the kitchen. It'll be out in a second. Pally, All right, here. give me that gun. Uh, 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 Mr. Granger! Get out of here, Frankie! 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 had crashed through the door. And when Pell Strader turned on him, the newspaper man lifted him through the shoulder. We took them both down to headquarters, told our story, and saw Frankie Smith released from custody. It was five in the morning. The next time we met was in Frankie Smith's apartment. Say, you and Cal certainly make a good team, Granger. I had a lot of lucky breaks. Oh, by the way, the police paraffin Strader and Leela Ran, that charming lady, is going up for murder. She shot the guy who assaulted me, huh? She certainly did. It looks like she was even Strader's boss. Strader's in deep, too. Those syndicate records, plus the bail bond brokers yelling, have uh, got him but hot. Plenty hot. At least we did what Steve set out to. We got you out for Christmas Eve. Hi, Bill! Hello, little man. Hey, what are you carrying in a package? My Christmas present to my pop. Uh, I decided to give it to him now. Holy smoke. What are you giving him, 20 pounds of lead? No, he always forgets to see for his cab license. So this year, I did it for him. There's $50 worth of pennies in that package. Well, how do you like that? I'll tell you, Frankie. That was my son. I like it fine. <laughs> Steve Granger again. You've just heard one of the most interesting cases in my files. And I'll have another one for you. So be around next time. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on Chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? 
they were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere, and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.